Welcome to the Let Good Things In Show. I'm your host, Amanda Acker. I am so happy you're here. At the Let Good Things In Show, we talk all about second chances, resiliency, following your intuition, and even music. Listen to hear stories of hope and to be inspired. Remember, you are stronger than you think. Let's dive in. Hi, my amazing humans. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so excited to be bringing you our guest, Karen Sammer. She is a health and nutrition coach. So welcome to the show, Karen. So nice to have you. Thank you, Amanda, for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So could you tell us more about you and what you do and how you kind of got to where you're at today? Sure. So as you said, I'm a health and nutrition coach. And I primarily work with women who live with or are at risk for developing chronic illness like heart disease or diabetes or maybe high blood pressure, cholesterol, high cholesterol, anything that can be managed through lifestyle and nutrition changes. And awesome. so, uh, so these, are the, these are the people that I find that uh, really need my help and yeah. I'm most successful with. Awesome. So what made you want to um, get into that line of work? Well, in 2009, I was diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer. Hmm. And uh, at the time, my life was um, not, not in a good place. I was very overweight, was in a very high stress job. I was raising two teenagers. I wasn't feeding myself well. I might have been drinking a little too much, not getting <laughs> enough sleep under a tremendous amount of stress, as you can imagine. So clearly, my body was not in its best condition. And right. I found out I had breast cancer. And I went through a year of treatment for this um, illness, and it was really pretty grueling. But in the meantime, while I was doing that, I decided I didn't want this to be my, my life. I didn't want it to be my story any longer. So I completely changed my life and um, lost 135 pounds. Oh, wow. Congratulations. And thank you. And <laughs> I feel better now than I did 30 years ago. So it's what I did in the process of losing that weight is I found my passion, which is to help other people do the same thing. And maybe they don't have to lose 135 pounds, but a, a, a 10% weight loss, if you're overweight, a 10% weight loss is significantly imp, uh, impactful on your, on the state of your health. It, it really helps your, you know, your numbers go down. It helps your joints. It helps everything. And yeah. so, um, so really what I do is I work with people to lose weight, to get control of their health, take control of their health and to, um, just keep it off, keep the weight off. And cause it, you know, it takes a lot more than just changing your diet. You have to change your mindset and everything else. Right. That's a, that's very hard. I know like I, um, I've tried to go to the gym, you know, to get fit. And then it's like, that doesn't work. I don't want to go. And then you start, then you see the changes, but then you get like, Oh, I'm good. I won't go today. You know? So it's that whole, like, you got to keep, it's changing the whole, your whole perspective on your health and wellness. That's a hard thing to do on your own. So (laughs) it absolutely is. And it's really, So, you know, to your point, it is not a a once and done thing. It it is a lifestyle change. It's a, it's a complete uh, reversal possibly of your lifestyle. Yeah. And so it's a, you know, you have to make these significant changes and you can make incremental changes, but that's that's where I kind of give people the guidance to, to do that and to help them change their mindset around the whole thing. Okay. That's awesome. So grateful for people like you. You're doing wonderful things. Um, so what are some tips that you have for our, for the listeners here today um, on how to, you know, change their mindset around health and wellness and to live a healthier lifestyle? So, so I have a program and so I'll take you through the five steps of my program okay. and, and give you a little bit of uh, insight into those. So my program is five, five steps. It's Mindset, nutrition, lifestyle, emotional health, and self-care. And so with mindset, you really have to change the way you look at things, the way you look at yourself, the way you talk to yourself, because we are sometimes, we, we are self-sabotaging on, on a regular basis. Whenever we speak oh, yes. negatively to ourselves or about ourselves, even joking, like, don't do that. It's really, your, your, self, your subconscious does not know the difference between a joke and the truth or a lie in the truth that hears what it hears and it takes it very literally. Right. So, so when you talk badly about yourself, that just, that is just becoming embedded in your psyche. So that's one of the things that I do is I, is I help people learn how to self-correct when they start going down that negative path and, um, and just change their mindset toward uh, around the, 
you know, the task at hand, like they're, uh, if they're trying to lose a significant amount of weight, don't look at the whole thing. You can't eat the whole elephant at one time, right? You take it one bite at a time. So you chunk it up into small bits and you, and you um, appreciate milestones and you celebrate milestones that you hit, you know, small, tiny little milestones. So important to celebrate every little, every little thing. Every little, (laughs) every accomplishment. Absolutely. Give yourself credit and give yourself grace if you fall off because you're not going to be perfect. And, but you have to give yourself some grace. So, so that's the mindset. Nutrition is a small part, a very important part, but it's a small part of what I do because the nutrition is very important because you want to nourish your body the right way. But all the other stuff around it is as important, if not more so, because if you don't get the other stuff right and the nutrition is going to fall off, the, it's just going to fall off the table, right? Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't give yourself enough uh, Self care, you know that's another thing. So if you're yeah. not, if you don't care enough about yourself to give you give it your body uh, proper nutrition, then that's going to fall off. It's you just you're going to reach for the the quick fix, the fast food, the takeout, the drive by, whatever it is. You yep. know, you're do all that. So so these things are all kind of intertwined. You know, you've got the the mindset to to talk to yourself very nicely and to get yourself in the right headspace. The nutrition to pick the right foods. The self care to take to have the have the um, the love for yourself that that makes you worth it to take care of yourself. So uh, practicing that because if you don't, you, know, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't take care of anybody else if you don't take care of yourself first, right? Very true. And then lifestyle is really managing your stress, uh, managing expectations of other people, managing your boundaries. You know, keeping your boundaries <laughs> safe and, yeah. and you know not allowing people to breach your boundaries. Because you treat you teach people how to treat you, so if you allow them to walk all over you, of course they're going to do that. But if you treat them or teach them that you have that they that these boundaries are in place and they're not you're not going to let them penetrate these boundaries, they'll learn that and they'll and they'll learn to respect you for that. Yeah. And then the emotional health. There is it is not to be understated that when you for, for so I can talk to my own example I, when I lost that significant amount of weight. I took up a much less space in the world and, you know, in, on, on the planet. And it had an, it had an emotional impact on me because I felt small and I felt almost insignificant, not enough to gain it back, but, right. but I felt, I felt like it was, um, you know, I wasn't as noticeable. I wasn't, you know, like I didn't have as big a presence. So my, now what I do to be, no, to be significant or to be noticeable or to make an impact is I try to, give other people the information rather than taking up large, a large amount of physical space in the world. I let my voice, I, you know, my voice is doing that work for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Our voices are so powerful. You know, I know for, you know, my life and, you know, that feeling of, you know, how you're speaking on self-sabotage and how we tend to do negative self-talk like that is so real throughout my life because I always thought, well, I'm not worth it. So why bother? I'm not good enough. Like this person left me, so I'm not deserving of love. And then we convince ourselves of that. And that's the energy we therefore put into the world. So that is what we attract back to us. So it's until you have that kind of, I like to call them my light bulb moments. Those moments where you're just like, oh, if I just look at the positive side and have a, an, a safe place to release my negative emotions, then I'm better able to take care of myself. And that's so important. And I think a lot of times I get, we don't realize most of us, I know I didn't, don't even realize the power of our own minds over everything we're trying to do, losing weight, um, eating better, you know, running a business, my goodness, you know, Absolutely. and <laughs> all the things. So yeah, that's very true. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you too, um, going back to self-care. Um, what would, what are some, you know, examples of self-care that you, you know, would tell your clients to do that, you know, cause I know like, as women, um, I know for men out there, I'm sorry, but <laughs> as women, um, we tend to think of self-care as getting our nails done and, you know, spending money on ourselves. We don't see it as more of an internal thing. So what are some self-care, you know, share with us like your self-care habits and things that, you know, you would tell others to do. So one of the things I like, I'm, I'm kind of an introverted extrovert. Yeah, you know, I love I love meeting people and talking to people, and but 
the pandemic has been almost a gift to me because I've met a lot of people, but not had to leave my house. To do right. It. It's so and nice. <laughs> it is. It's wonderful. And, and, and I, and I feed on that energy. So, so one of the things I like to do is have alone time. And if that means that I have to stay up a little later than my husband, just to have the house to myself or to have my space to myself where I can read, or I can watch some kind of trashy TV that I want to watch <laughs> or, um, or something like that. I, I do like my alone time and it, it just needs to be an hour maybe. But or, you know, just take a nice hot bubble bath with some mm-hmm. candles and maybe some soft music or just listen to music. Just sit and listen to music and or spend time with your significant other. You know, like it doesn't always have to be a long time. You could, you know, just have some nice, quiet time with whoever your partner is. If you have a partner, if not, be your own partner. You know, nobody yeah. you don't need a partner to be help to be whole, first, first of all. But, um, it, you know, just be your own best company. And read a book. I like to read. So I love to read. Uh, I, I love to read self-development books. And yeah, so me too. Really, yeah, <laughs> it's just really. Great. Yeah, they are. And I, and I really get a lot of good information from them. And then I walk. Uh, somebody told me one time that I walk like a Maasai warrior. I just like, I can walk for miles and miles. And I love oh, wow. doing that. But I, so I put on my headphones and I listen to a podcast or I listen to a book on tape, you know, Audible. I have a, a subscription with yeah. Audible. Or I listen to some kind of a training or just, you know, and sometimes I listen to music. I just recently signed up for Clubhouse and sometimes I eavesdrop on those conversations. Oh, yeah. Clubhouse. That's, that's a crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> it's interesting over there. It, it is interesting. But it's, I feel like I'm listening in on somebody's phone conversation on both yes. sides of the conversation. You know, so, yes. so I'm getting used to that. But, you know, occasionally I listen to those conversations. But, you know, just again, alone time, just time to just kind of regroup and, and get out, get away from the world. You maybe get out to get some fresh air and some vitamin D, which is very important. Yeah. Um, but none of that stuff costs any money. Right. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just refreshing and rejuvenating and, and, and just kind of renewing. And, yeah. and then, you know, I can face the world. Yeah. I agree with all that. Yeah. I feel the same, you know, with self-care I was having a conversation the other day and we were talking about self-care and I was telling her how I said no to somebody. Like there was something, I can't remember what it was, but I told somebody no. And she was like, well, that's self-care. And it was a light bulb moment. I was Mm -hmm. like, huh? You know? (laughs) So, you know, taking care of yourself, it could be like you said, like, you know, taking that time to pause and reflect and just spend time with you or your significant other. I love that you said that because a lot of times I'll get asked like, oh, you know, how do you take care of yourself? And like, I don't want to say spending time with my husband and family because I feel like it's not, it's not just me. So you saying that was another light bulb moment. So whatever makes your heart feel good is yeah. self-care. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you, it's really very subjective. It's whatever you decide is self-care. What is going to make you feel better than you did before you started? Yeah. That's what you, that, that to me is the definition of self-care. Yeah. I love that. Um, so what would you say makes you different from other health coaches? I don't think anybody does it like I do. And I think that goes with any, anybody, right? Everybody does their job uniquely the way they do it. Right. There's nobody else, you know, everybody else is taken. You're the only person who can be you. So, and nobody else has had my experience. They, they may have had some version of my experience, but they've never had my unique situation, my, my unique um, sequence of experiences and what I bring to the table. So I also, not only did I have cancer, but I'm also, um, I had what is called a spontaneous coronary artery dissection. So mm-hmm. it means I, one of my arteries in my heart split and caused a heart attack. And so that's what, that's what put me on the path of, of working with people with chronic illness, you know, heart disease, that type of thing. Yeah. So that, you know, things that because 80% of that is preventable. What happened to me was not preventable. It is a, it's an anomaly in my body. Uh, I, I recovered from that, but there's something in my body that, that may have been a precursor to it that oh. I had no knowledge of until I had the heart attack. And then they did some further exploration and found this, this situation. But, um, so all I can do is take care of myself and be the best that I can be. And um, hopefully it won't happen again. But if it does, you know, I don't know, because I don't get, I don't get warnings. You know, I didn't get a wow. warning from it other than the symptoms of the, you know, when it was, when it was happening. But 
So my unique set of circumstances brings my experience to the to the table. And you know, I I lost 135 pounds. I lost the equivalent of a human being. Yeah. And so I can help somebody do that or more or less. You know, 10, 10 pounds may be just as difficult for somebody as my 135 pounds. Yeah. So I have that perspective. And then I can help, you know, and I can, and, I, and there isn't a story that somebody can tell me that I haven't already used on myself, I feel anyway. Right. So, so that's why I think, you know, and, and I think that's with everybody though. Everybody's got their own unique life to bring to the, to, to bring to the equation, to make the experience much more fulfilling for everybody who's involved. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I feel like, you know, and then telling our stories and how you're, you know, telling how, you know, you lost all that weight and you had cancer and, you know, all these things and then the heart condition and everything you've had to overcome. There's so much power in that. And I think that, you know, for so many of, you know, the listeners out there too, who have these amazing stories, you know, that they're ashamed to tell because there's a lot of shame when it comes to, into being vulnerable. So there's, I don't like the word vulnerable, but I really don't know how else to describe it. But it's, it's actually a pretty good word, though, if you think about it. And it's yeah. a scary word. It is. Right? It it's is a, scary. Yeah, it's a scary place to be. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I agree with you that there's that people feel a lot of shame around their story. And the, in shame, if you if you're a Brene Brown fan, or who I and I am a huge Brene yes, Brown, yes, love which her. it sounds like you you probably <laughs> were too. But shame thrives in darkness. Mm-hmm. shame you know when you shine light on shame it can dissipate and as long as you shine it positively and, and are able to you know work through it and 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 allow it to dissolve in the light but when you keep it in darkness and you keep it hidden because I did that for decades in my life yeah. as a child you know and and I found when I finally let the light in that there were people there to support if you had only if I had only let them in there were people there who could have supported me through the, you know, very difficult years that I had. And unfortunately, you know, that was the, you know, family secrets, especially when I was growing up, you know, things were not shared with the world and, yeah. and you kind of lived in your little secret bubble, but it's really, uh, it's empowering to allow your shame or to allow, to allow your vulnerability to show because you realize that there are people there who want to be of support. Yes. Of help. Yes. And, and, you know, um, and that was what makes you unique because like you said, nobody else has your experiences. Nobody can negate your life story because it's yours and that's part of you and letting that out and then sharing your gifts with the world like you do, Karen, with, you know, helping other women who have chronic illnesses or who want to prevent those things from happening to live a healthier life like that's so important because if we're not healthy like you said earlier how how good are we to the rest of the world like we have to be able to show up for ourselves to be able to show up for everybody else and all of those things together like it's so empowering when you do that um so another question um I'll ask you too is you know what is like the number one tip you have for everybody um to you know, my show is called the Let Good Things In Show. So what is your number one tip to tell people how they can let the good things in no matter where they're at in their lives? So I would say that you always have to remember that you are worth it. You are worth taking care of. You are worth the good food. You're worth the nice time. You're worth being treated with respect. And if any of those things are not happening, if you're not being treated with respect, if you're not feeling safe where you are, you, you are as much as you can, you should feel empowered to get out of that situation. And sometimes it's not easy. I know, but, but you are worth it. You are, everybody is worth there. Everybody is a valuable human being. And, and, and I, my, my dream in life is for every woman, especially because women, I think, are more susceptible to that feeling of worthlessness than men are. Yeah. You know, and, and I shouldn't necessarily say that because I'm sure there are plenty of men who feel who suffer the same kind of thing. But I, it, it, you have to know, know that you were worth it. And my dream is that every woman on this planet knows that she is worth taking care of and being safe and 
being valued. And it's really important that that women own that for themselves. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, I, I, you know, with the, you know, knowing that you're worth it, like for me, like when you're saying that, I felt like you were speaking to me because I've lived pretty much my whole life since I was 15, feeling like I was worthless, feeling like, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not worth anything. Like, why is anyone going to love me and accept me? I've done, you know, I've had these traumatic events happen to me and, you know, but I put all the shame onto myself and I hid myself. I dimmed my own light. Like it was nobody's fault. I made those choices in my life. I was, you know, I could have made better choices, but I didn't. And that's something I have to forgive myself with and realize that even though I did those things, I'm still worth, you know, I'm, I'm worth love. I'm worth being, you know, being able to have this platform to, to share these wonderful stories of hope with everyone around the world. You know, it's amazing. So yes, you are worth it. I love that. That's beautiful. So <laughs> to wrap things up, I just want to say thank you again, Karen, so much for being here and sharing your story with us and, you know, all about the things that you're doing out in the world. Um, just so everyone knows, I will have all the ways that you can connect with Karen linked to the episode. And um, is there anything else that you would like to say to the listeners before we wrap up? Well, I would like to say that I offer a free consultation to anybody who wants to um, have a conversation with me. We talk for about an hour. Uh, they What they do is they go onto my calendar, which you're going to share the link for, I assume. Yes. And they can, they, they'll answer a few intake questions so that that will direct the conversation that we have. And what we do is we talk about their unique health challenges and, and maybe solution on some of them and, and see what we can do. And I, they'll walk away with some good uh, action steps that they can take and maybe we'll work together, maybe not. No big deal. But either way, they're going to come away with some value, valuable information, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, that link will definitely be um, linked to the episode. And um, again, so grateful to have you here, Karen. Um, thank you so much, everyone who's listening. And like I always say to everyone out there, you're stronger than you think. You're capable of anything you could possibly imagine and your past does not define you. Make sure to hit subscribe or follow and I will talk to you all soon. 